You're beautiful. And there is no way that we could possibly synthesize you, the wholeness that you are, into words. Though people try, we all do it. It's the, it's when you say to yourself, you trick yourself, like in that sentence, all right? Good example. You say to yourself, but only one of those things can be true. And it's certainly not the voice synthesizing that into language. And then those thoughts that you define yourself with repeat all the time. And then you see suffering because you say to yourself, your ego says, well, your mind creates an ego which says, when this, then you'll be whole. Or many, many, many other tricks. It's that identification that causes the suffering, that thoughts appear your brain is an organ that produces thought and then you hold on to them. You. Here's a good example, a contemporary example, which is the title of the video, which is this poor bloke who is in that band seems to have attempted to drown out that voice after creating, after placing his self-worth in future achievements or material things. And that is clearly a recipe for disaster. And it just, you know, that insecurity just manifests in countless different ways. And so I you know, we, we can't, act, we, then we synthesize it into, into behavior. But behavior is somewhat objective. Well, behavior is objective. And then you say, like, all right, um, yeah, apparently he, he was just being mean to his missus and stuff like that. Um, and then as everything just continues to occur, then, you know, drowning out that voice will no doubt mess you up. Just another sentence, yeah, yeah, anyway. So now we're in a weird position because he's just committed suicide because of that little voice uh, or it with extra steps. And so now we're left in the position where if you've been following that drama and I only found out about it because of the news, but then I saw a video that was like six days earlier and, you know, details, oh my God, like, you know, all these. Sort of... So just consider that that little voice inside of you is getting a high from superiority to another person. And, yeah, you know, look, I'm doing it too. Oh, you know, it's a practice, you know, that's mindfulness. And now you're in a interesting position where you're like, oh, you have to reconcile that and preserve the ego and be like, uh, well, he's done like a bunch of bad things, but he didn't deserve, like it's important to talk about those and, uh, you know, but he, you know, he didn't deserve that or whatever. And in doing that, you create Part of the reason we all collectively suffer is because we create separation between thoughts, between other people. And there's no actual compassion in that. We're all just locked into these thoughts. And yeah, without, without compassion, and like how does his mother feel? And yeah, like I, and again, I don't know anything about him, um, but 
you should treat the world as your lover and just love it. And, and sometimes your lover is just, you know, like, you know, just standoffish or rude or some, some manifestation of it. And you just have to sit there with full loving presence and just unconditionally accept the present moment. And then, and then when you actually cultivate understanding, then you can like, you know, work to change it. If someone had of, you know, I'm, I guess there's a lot, there's been a lot that we don't know. Um, but I guess a lot of people didn't speak truth to him. And yeah, he was just caught up in, in that sort of thing. And so I reckon if, we're, if we cultivated a more understanding and sort of more beautiful society that we listened to people instead of what we construct and the masks we wear, I reckon that'd be cool. I reckon there was a lot of opportunities. And yeah, partly you can't change someone who doesn't want to be changed, but you can at least create more opportunities for that conversation and cut through it and just be present. So yeah, anyway. You feel me? You feel me? Obviously it's more complicated than that. And there's so much that you wouldn't know, but you know, um, yeah. I heard, there, well, you know, there was the story that someone said about, about him, that he had like a, you know, he had a, you know, lovely girlfriend and he was saying things like, if you, you know, you'll, you know, you'll break up with me, you'll screw this up. Yeah. I wonder who was around him and what he was doing with his time and like what, it, what occurred up to that point and that if we give celebrities sort of like counselling or whatever, you know, if we, if we created mindfulness training for people or we just got people focusing on you know, things if we didn't idolise celebrities and if we treated them like actual people who just had a talent. Like imagine that sort of thing in your neighbourhood instead of like the screaming, fangirling sort of thing like, oh my God, and just realise that we're being sold a product on that. And then, yeah, if we could collectively just enjoy people as people instead of creating like the, the cult of personality around them. That would be cool. Just if you saw, if you saw him down the street, it wouldn't be like a thing where it was like, oh my God, like you're my everything. We've probably contributed to it, you know? And then just deep seated problems that weren't addressed as a young person didn't have the conversations because we're all collectively lonely and don't have those conversations and we don't speak the truth because it's easier not to lie, but admit and we don't teach things in school that you should know, you know? And so if you saw him down the street, you'd be, you'd say, oh, oh, gee whiz, mate, pleasure to meet you. And just a short, brief conversation, you know? And then I reckon you have cool things from that in a more local world. Yeah, but there's a lot of things that have to be for that, but not really. But yeah, anyway, sending you love. Ciao, ciao.